Welcome back to Rexall Place in Edmonton, where the Oilers shut out the Rangers 2-0 tonight. And we continue with After Hours, and our guest, Ryan Smith, back where he belongs, he would say, and so would Oiler fans. Uh, here's a tweet from uh, Mason Marlatt. Uh, the Twitter handle is at Marlatt14. When the Oilers played L.A. last season, uh, Smith told Jonesy28 his mullet was better. Does Smith ever have mullet envy? <laughs> I can't I can't compete with Jonesy's. His is a mop. Mine's a mullet. <laughs> so who's gonna who's gonna be the first in the shampoo commercial? Who's gonna be the Troy Palomalu of the Oilers? That's what I want to know. Uh, Got to get your agent on. We told we told Jonesy that last year, didn't we, Scott? Yes, and I, and I don't think we were successful in getting an endorsement, so you can see the power of this show. Um, <laughs> as master of the mullet, uh, we want you to pick the winner of the Ryan Smith Award for best mullet of all time in the NHL. This has to be an historic thing because you're the only one in the NHL still sporting. Well, well Ryan Jones, I guess, as well. But yeah. All right, here's our first contender. You may recognize oh, him. Oh, yeah. look at the flow. Wayne Gretzky. That one's pretty good. That's game. layered. Don't forget, you're picking a winner here. Oh, geez. Yeah. Kelly, Kelly, are you watching? He's, he's Studio watching 42. There, yeah. Oh. yeah, that's Ryan Jones. He's there, right? That's Dash Riprock, yeah. maybe. Oh. Ally Afraidy. Oh, nice. That, nice. That, the that, wild thing. That'd be my mullet oh. right there. Your armor, yeah. I knew his was coming That has sure. a lot of dimensions yeah. to it. Yes, it does. It's uh, 10 up top, 90 in the back. Yeah. <laughs> Marty McSorley. <laughs> uh, and uh, Reach. Mike Ricci. Reach. Nice. Okay, next one is that's Ziggy oh, Paul. That's all, yeah. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. And well, Barry that's... Melrose. Pick one. Ooh. Um. There was a few guys that were missing there, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, well who are we missing that you would? We'll go would... with either uh, Barry Melrose yeah. or uh, Kelly Rudy. Wow. Yeah, I think Rudy gets it Rudy automatically. It, eh? yeah, it's Speaking of mullets, there is some evidence of wow. uh, one on the, on the Ryan Smith bobblehead that was That's yours. Let's handed out here on Tuesday night. But the general reaction is that could be one of 20 people. That how, do you, be, how do you think you look yeah, on that bobblehead? This is my head? Halloween costume. <laughs> 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 no, I, I, you know, I think they did a good job. You do, um, huh? <laughs> looks like you, you feel. A um, little bit. A little bit like you, a little the bit eyes, like Everly, a little maybe bit like... Maybe the eyes are off a little bit, but yeah. the hair off the back is pretty cool. They got the cool. hair. I was they mentioned to Scott earlier today, uh, yeah, this morning, was mm. uh, the one in L.A. has no bucket. Oh, no so helmet. it's all so, flow. Yeah, all flow. That's so all, it's pretty that's cool. That's a flow feature. It doesn't have, uh, it doesn't have the, uh, the oiler, that's for sure. So this is, this is very special. Nice. Uh, Ryan, hockey players are creatures of habit, and you are that times 10. So let's start with the shoulder pads. That uh, par parts of which are 16 years of age. Um, and, the, and the good thing I, is I know that the answer. Wet. Yeah, wet. <laughs> the good thing is they're well, wet. And they, and they got <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I know the answer yeah. to the question, but I got to ask it. Wouldn't it just be easier to get a new pair? <laughs> <laughs> Personal preference, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So what, what? What's old here and what's new? Okay. All well, obviously you can see, tell which one's new. This yeah. is the new stuff that yeah. that came in last year, mm -hmm. and Soft uh, cap. the the trainers in LA did that. That's. That's uh, league rule. Yeah. Um, obviously, you can see all the old stuff here. Mm -hmm. And the inside was something that uh, uh, Dwayne Mendez Mandruziak, uh, the Eskimo, Eskimo yeah, manager. Eskimo okay. yeah. When I hurt my shoulder back uh, when I played with the Oilers, we put this in. Barry Stafford put this in mm -hmm. with Dwayne. And uh, ever since then, I've uh, felt really comfortable with it. It, it supplies, uh, you know, obviously more impact when I get hit. Mm -hmm. It just it dis distributes elsewhere. So... Um, and then the, the flap jacket off the back here, we've... Uh, Cross checks. Yeah. Right? I extended front of the net, paying the price. Yeah. 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 Paying the price. Extended <laughs> on because uh, a couple years, uh, couple years ago I broke my ribs. So. Right. Most so painful injury. Uh, yeah. So oh. these then um, yeah. are basically a 14 to 15 year project. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're from day one. Question yeah, is, from day what one. were they day one? What kind of shoulder pads okay. were those? I'm trying to... Were they Cooper? Were they Donzi? Like, what were these? Vaughn. Vaughn shoulder pads. Yeah, there you go. Really? Yeah. Yeah. A little love for the goalie there factory. You, yeah. I love it. There you go. Nice. So, yeah. The stick, Kevin. No, oh, the stick is very important. Yeah. Um, La Moule. So we've got the, the detail. But let's go beyond the detail, right? Like when I look at your stick, uh, this your curve, I know you've, you've changed it slightly. Would you say you add a little toe to it? As I've gotten it? a little older, I've got, had to tweak it a little bit. Okay. Now maybe explain to our viewers why you've tweaked it with a little bit more of a toe curve compared to what you had before. Well, <laughs> Be <laughs> honest. Me, I'm not getting strong enough to get it up. But uh, no, I... Everything is personal preference. Right. Um, I find that uh, I, with with the, uh, this type of stick for mm -hmm. me, 
I don't get a great shot. Right. Okay. I'm not recognized as a big shooter. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, it's all the stuff in front of the net, mm -hmm. and uh, it works for me. Tipping pucks, uh, you know, in around the crease area. Um, you know, when I get get a good shot, not like today, I missed the net by 20 <laughs> feet. It's all right. Uh, but it's all, uh, you know, it's a very stiff stick, mm -hmm. and then the wood. What's your lie? Four and a half. Okay. And lastly, the blade. For a lot of young players that didn't have a chance or to see Wayne Gretzky play, but to me, your blade minus the tip curve. Before you had the tip curve, yeah. your pattern to me was a spinning image of Wayne Gretzky's. Yeah, Is that it's pretty very accurate close. Yeah, that's very, to very say? close. Yeah. Um, I liked, uh, you know, I like nowadays with uh, the fact that uh, the ice. They're not the greatest around the league, mm -hmm. so I, I like a thicker blade, and I right. think this is really close to maximizing uh, as far as uh, league rules, uh, as far as width. A little wax uh, on there, or is that Gordie yeah, Howe tape? That's Gordie Howe, and then a little wax to keep nice. uh, to keep the snow away. Okay. Just found this tweet from Tyler1991. Ryan tapes his blade like Gretzky, tucks his sweater in like Gretzky, wears gloves like Gretzky. Ask him about that. Pretty good well, guy to emulate, right? Yeah. Yeah. Not a bad guy to emulate. <laughs> no, not a bad guy at all. But uh, obviously, he's uh, he's the, the greatest player that ever played the game, I believe. And uh, he's uh, he's been a big inspiration for me um, throughout my whole career. So, uh, And I even got to golf with him at the end of this year. So it's pretty special. Back to the stick. You don't have to defend it because it's worked well for you over the course yeah. of your career. Um, I guess the question would be, have you ever thought of getting into the 90s? But we know with your stick, but we know why you haven't. Uh, here's what a few of your teammates think of your stick. It's a power play. You're on the ice. You shatter your stick. You race to the bench. The only stick you can get is Ryan Smith's. What do you do? Change. <laughs> well, hope that one breaks. Race back to the bench. Grab another stick. Hopefully he doesn't get another stick You know, in the rack of his. Um, you know, his, uh, it's funny, like we joke about his stick a lot and, and about how if someone breaks his stick, he's the first guy to put his stick out there. And it's almost like giving him, <laughs> I, mean, I don't even know, like a, a wrong hand stick for anybody. Like that's the, that thing is so heavy and so hard to use. Um, there's only one guy that can use it, and that's Ryan Smith. Is it? <laughs> you, want to, you want to respond or do you have to? I do, I do. <laughs> Actually, uh, during the timeouts and stoppage of play, all uh, the, the guys in that clean the ice, they asked for my stick, too, for, for shoveling. <laughs> <Sweet enough. Yeah. laughs> uh, canoe paddle, shovel, you name it. Um, here's a tweet from Alberta Hippie 420 Ooh. Ask Smith if he wants to sign with the Oilers for the rest of his career and if he and Tambellini have talked about that yet. We have not discussed it. Um, obviously, I'd love to uh, end my career here. Um, you know, my f family feels uh, very blessed to be back here. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I feel good enough to uh, uh, to compete at a high level still and uh, want to go as long as I can. I guess we could conclude you didn't come back here uh, thinking that this was a one-year project, right? No, not at all. Um, like I said, I, I, I feel good. Uh, I felt really good at the end of last year. And uh, starting out, I feel pretty good this year. So um, I, I still got a lot left in me. Let's see your bottom teeth. They're still here. Yeah, they're yeah. looking good right now, but uh, not so good on that night back in 06. It was, uh -huh. what, uh, game three of the series against San Jose. You almost swallowed Chris Pronger's clearing pass. Lower lip exploded. You lost three teeth and uh, only missed about three shifts after getting stitched up. Stayed down just long enough to split the teeth out, as we could see. Uh, in triple OT, you set up uh, Sean Ouch. Horkoff's winner. Oh that, uh, oh, that uh, saved the playoffs for you. But this is really part of Euler folklore because yeah. you came back so quickly. And I recall that uh, you were mystified over all the accolades you received because your response was, well, why wouldn't I come back? Oh. Um, years later, how do you look back at that? <laughs> I don't even know if guys can come back now because of the uh, quiet concussions. Room, the quiet, or, yeah, room, the quiet right, room for whatever, 15 minutes or half hour. But, uh, no, it's... I don't know what it is. I just rebound and uh, you know, been blessed to, to come through those type of things. And uh, I know there was an incident that we talked about earlier that when I came back, um, coming off the ice, coming off the yeah. ice, I opened up the door, uh, actually not too far from here, that little hallway, and there was a, um, a, a lady usher, and I opened up the door. I didn't know she was on the other side, and she ended up breaking her arm and or breaking her wrist, and I felt really, really bad. Um, and I th think uh, I believe sent I, her flowers I think the we next sent day. her flowers. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So, but uh, no, it's it's who I am as a person. My uh, I guess uh, the will inside of me uh, to come back and uh, and just compete. And whether it's uh, teeth, nose, um, 
you know, it's a, it's a, it's like I said, it's a privilege and honor to play this game, and uh, I want to compete as high as I can and uh, consistently. I want to be the best player on the ice every night. That's what I think I I can be, but obviously, <laughs> it's tough with the, the the great players nowadays. Which of the Oilers, when you first came into the league, had the biggest impact on you for you to kind of process and think that way? Well, there was a lot of them for sure, um, but one guy that uh, really uh, mentored me was Kelly Buckberger. Mm. There's a guy to take a punch or, uh, um, you know, do whatever it take, takes for the team to win. And uh, uh, I learned uh, extremely a lot from him. He uh, allowed him and Carla uh, allowed me to stay at their place uh, for three months my first year. And, uh, you know, when you have guys like that uh, um, make you feel comfortable when you That's come right. into the league, it, it, it makes it a lot easier, the pressure-wise. But, uh, um, you know, Dougie Waite. Mm -hmm. uh, Jason Arnott was here, Luke, Luke Richardson. Mm -hmm. uh, there were so many great players. Um, it's only natural that at the age of 35, and with so many young players on this team, you'll be a mentor. So this morning, there you were at Center Ice. You convened a meeting. I'm not sure who you were with, but uh, here it is. And what was the topic of discussion? Well, we we're just talking about face-offs. And obviously, uh, you know, guys are bigger, stronger, faster in today's game. And we were just talking about... Uh, and you're talking to... Uh, that was Nugent Hopkins, and I think uh, Gagne. Gagne. Gagne, right? And then uh, Lander was in there too. Okay. So, just I think we were just reminiscing about what what different guys uh, do on on the Rangers, uh, um, you know, what their tactics are for sure. But uh, uh, as you get in there and experience, uh, uh, there's nothing like it. Nothing like getting in the, the face off circle. I'm not I'm not a centerman myself, but I I like to to take take draws that one year uh, Mac T put me in the middle for mm -hmm. 30 34 40 games and uh, I learned a lot okay. when you watch when you go back and watch the tape from tonight's game what's the main thing that you're going to take from it because for us we thought that was the most complete game we've seen the Oilers play in two years well I think um, when we play a high level um, of, with our speed that we've got not only because we have the youth but we have the speed mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I look back here, the first six, six games, seven games we've played, they've all been close games. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know the coaching staff has emphasized the fact that let's play defense first. We know we're going to get our offensive chances, but um, uh, once we capitalize even more, we're going to be uh, we're going to be a dynamite team. Can't let the night pass without mentioning Moose Jaw. So in yeah. 20 seconds or less, that's about all we have left here. Uh, how much of an impact was it playing under Al Tour in Moose Jaw? Did he impart his gritty style of play on you? That's via Twitter from Bretsky Nine. Well, that was uh, where that's where my wife's from, Stacy. So uh, Al was great. Um, he just played me, and um, we didn't see eye to eye at times, but he uh, he wanted to win. He was. Uh, uh, he was a competitor as a player and uh, as a coach, too. Thanks a lot, Ryan. Thanks, Appreciate Scott. It. Thanks so much, Appreciate Ryan. It. Appreciate it, man. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it, guys. All right, our thanks to Ryan Smith for uh, spending time with us on After Hours tonight. Uh, we'll be back to Rexall Place in Edmonton in a moment.